Okay, so I made a custom spoiler for uh, most sports cars out there and I actually had the idea from, oh, let me say, I saw the spoiler in Forza Horizon 4 and I saw it was applied to many cars in there and I decided to replicate the exact same spoiler on my Centenario model that I'm currently working on. It's a WIP. So, um... I made and yeah, there will be a time lapse for the modeling of the Centenario very soon. So I made the spoiler, the custom spoiler for the Centenario, and I realized it would be a good idea to you know upload it for you guys out there, so you can use it on your three D models, whatever sports car you have, and I bet you can also probably use it on some SUVs or off road trucks and other three D models of that sort. So. I will upload the spoiler onto I don't know maybe my mega account or Google Drop I mean Dropbox or Google Drive for you guys to download and you can try to fit it on any car you want but in this video I'm going to be teaching you how you can actually fit it on any sports car you want to fit it on okay so what you're going to do is just download the blend file it's a blend file download the blend file and open and open up the blend file and copy all of the objects in that blend file okay so just press a once or twice to select all of the objects and press ctrl c to copy it it should say somewhere in blender that copied eight objects or something i think it's eight objects so it will tell you just copied eight objects once you've done that all you want to do now is to go or open up your 3d model wherever it is and press ctrl v to paste the object in there and this is what it looks like okay so this empty here controls the whole spoiler right here so this is what we're going to be fitting on this car over here that is what we're going to be doing right now all right now you can see taking a look it's actually offset from the car so you can see it's moving to the right a little bit more all right so what we're going to do first since the this uh, lattice, this lattice, um, this empty here is in the center of the car. I'm gonna press Shift and S and choose Kezzer to select it, right? And I'm gonna take this empty here and press Shift and S and choose selection to Kezzer like that. Okay. Now with that done, we're gonna rotate the whole thing in the Z axis and type in 180. Okay, because it's facing the other side. It was facing the opposite side, but the car is facing here, so we want it to face this side. Just rotate it like that, and now we have to scale it. So let's go over to top view. And let's scale it to fit the size that we're looking for. So first I'll move it in the Y axis to the back here, and then I'll press S and scale it down, okay? Not in a specific axis, scale the whole thing down like this, so it could scale down proportionally. So you could leave as much space as you want you can make it go as close to it as you want or you can leave a little bit of a gap like that so I'll be leaving a gap about that on it so what we're gonna do now we're gonna press oh, let me just let me scale it down a little bit more so just a little bit more to about here like that now I'll press G and then Z and pull this up to here and let's get onto the the I mean, the side view I think uh, let me see, yeah. So side view, press 3 and get to side view like this, okay? Let's go into wireframe. I'm going to press G and I'm going to move this until the very point here. This very point here is sitting right on the trunk of the car and also very close to the line here, alright? Because this whole area can open up. So we want to make sure that when it's sitting on it and, some, and maybe someone wants to animate the trunk opening, it won't be a problem for it. So we're going to press G and move it close to it and also make sure it intersects with it like that. So I'm gonna move in here. Let me just let me just zoom into this side real quick. And let's select the 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 empty again. So I'll just press G and then Y move this back and then G and then Z. And you can see I'm making it sit right at the tip of the edge. I mean right at the edge like that. And it's looking good. I'll press G and then Z and move it up just a little bit like that. So with that done I'm gonna take this one now and I'm going to press you can see I okay well you don't need to know that but I actually put the origin right in the center here so make sure it's right there don't change it just let it be in the center over there but in case you must have changed it by mistake just select this object here 
Go into edit mode, press L to select all of this and press shift and S. Choose Kessa to select it and take this one and then apply the origin to the 3D Kessa. Alright, once you have done that, now let's take this one. We're going to press R and rotate it in the X axis all the way down to about here. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the MT again, like this. Take the MT. And let's go down here. I'm going to press G and then Z. I'm going to move it all the way down. I'll have it intersect a lot like that. I want to take this now. I'll press R and then X and I'll rotate it until it's showing all the way there about the same amount like that. So with that done now, we'll take the empty again. Let's go down here. We're going to press G and then Y and move this forward first like this. And then G and then Z and move this up until it's intersecting just a little bit like that. I'll move it back a little bit more, so G and Y, just slightly back. Let's see how where it ends over here. So that is not good. So we have to move it back even more to about here. Okay. So it's 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 flowing too much. I mean, it's going all the way back here, but the trunk will be opening up this way, so that won't be a problem. It will be opening up like this. So I don't think that will be a major problem. So let's let's get on with this. So we have it sitting on it like that. That is good. So now that it's sitting on it, we have to try and get this one to also fit into this hole over here. That is what we're going to be doing next. So let's take this lattice. That is what this lattice is for. So let's take that lattice and let's get onto the side view like this. And let's go into... So now that we, we have... Okay, so let's go, let's go into side view. Let's just go into side view. Let's go into wireframe. I want to take all of this. Take the very vertices, okay? Go into edit mode of the lattice and take all of the vertices at the very bottom here. I don't know if they're called, yeah, they're called vertices. The ones at the very bottom here. I'm going to press G. I'm going to move this down. This is where the end of the uh, the piece down there is on. Okay, so this is where it ends. So we're just going to press G and move this down here. And now we're going to share it in the Y axis. No, in the X axis, okay? Until it's sort of flat like that. I'm going to press G and then Z and move it up like this. Control, Alt, Shift, S, and then Y. No, X. Okay, they are different. In 2.79 is X, now in 2.8 is Y. So, we'll just share it like that. And let me just make sure this is actually... Yeah, so I think it's pretty close. I'll just press G and then Y now. And move this forward a little bit like that. And just move it back a little bit more. <clears throat> so with that done, you can see... It moved it down, but this whole area is hanging in the air. So what we're going to do to fix that is... Let's get out of full screen. So I'm going to press Control and Space. And we're going to go into the lattice option here, okay? And the V, we're going to increase the V value, okay, to 10. And you can see as we increased it, 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 it sent the very bottom here to the, to the, uh, to the lower, I mean, into the, um, what do I call it? Into the hole, this piece right here. So doing that, we can see there's too much gap over here. So let's change this back to 2 again. And let's take the vertices right at the bottom again so all of these vertices i'm going to press g and then y to move it a little bit more to there and then g and then z i'm going to move it down as well like that and move it a little bit more so now let's increase this again and yeah we still need to move it in the y axis a little bit more so g and then y and then move it what is going on g and then what's why is it moving Okay, they're not selected. So select them and press G and then Y and move it a little bit more like that. And then let's increase this again. Yeah, so that sits perfectly on it. So increase it to 10 like that. And you can see that looks very nice now. So you can just take the lattice and hide it now. And you can see it's looking great. Very, very nice. So that is all you have to do to achieve it. Right now my paint is green on the spoiler and it's red on the Corvette. So I'm going to change that right now. I'm going to go down here and my car paint, I'm going to change it from this one to the actual car paint here. Like that. So that gives us a good result at the end. Let me just hide these empties here real quick. Hide that. Hide this. And hide that. So let's take a look at how this looks. Just press Shift. And no, just press Z and select rendered. So let's take out how it looks. 
Okay, so you can see it looks great. It's looking good. So you can basically apply this to, well, most sports cars out there and maybe some SUVs or any vehicle model out there, if only it fits. So I hope this helps you guys out and save you the time of having to model an actual spoiler. So yeah, that's basically it for this tutorial. I'll see you guys in the next video.